we put out a, a, a call to tested, uh, to tested members mm -hmm. uh, for questions. Um, Ian Rigby wants to know, when you are fitted for your suit, what is the process? How far in advance are you measured, fitted, and the components tested? And are you required to maintain a certain level of physicality in order to ensure it still works? Okay. So what suit do you think we're talking about here? Well, I think we're talking, talking about, about the, the, the orange. The orange suit? The orange, yeah. okay. That's yeah. suit which you've made. Yes. You uh, helped me. By the way, I have, yeah. when the I person. made my orange Aces <laughs> suit, I was texting Mike every other day going, what's in this pocket? What's in this pocket? What's in this pocket? <laughs> I sent you my drawings. That was I got the same great. Sony micro recorder. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. It sits in the... <laughs> Because he wanted to record your, uh, you know, your thoughts. I just wanted, I wanted the same amount of everything in my pockets. I'm a completist. I wanted the, That's the full we had. I had. Did you have the leather gloves too? Yep. I had leather deerskin gloves. Yep. In I got case. the same make and model. You know what those were for? Did I tell you what those? Were? So if you end up in the water, right? right. If, you had, if you had a bailout, you're in the water, and uh, they gave us some. Our, our survival kit had some fishing tackle in it, so we wanted deerskin gloves so we wouldn't hurt our hands with trying to go catch a fish. Amazing. Can you imagine? Like if I, and I was like, this was one of my crewmates' ideas, and so <laughs> like, yeah, all right, sure, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take the deerskin gloves. And I'm thinking to myself, that's, imagine bailing out of a space shuttle and <laughs> on fire or exploding, and then, and then you get down in the middle of the ocean, and you're like, oh, let me see if I can catch something here. <laughs> now I'm gonna, little, you know, I'm gonna get some sushi. You don't have a barbecue with you. You know, instead of like, the first thing is you're like, how do I get the rescue forces over here? Like, I mean, I'll eat some Cheetos on the, you know, on the, on the helicopter. At the same time, whatever they're gonna send out to get you. Anyway, at, at but, the same time, there's that survival training they did for the Mercury astronauts. Do you remember this? No, Where they took them out to some like some remote location and yeah. gave them only what they would have landed with, yeah. which is their suit and a parachute. Yeah. And by the end of the week, they're all unshaven, oh, wearing yeah, 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 the suits yeah, yeah. as yeah, togas. Yeah, yeah. And, the, oh, just, and they yeah. look so happy. They look at the yeah. happiest seven people you've ever seen. Yeah. That's camaraderie is what kept those guys happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we had, the uh, question so, was... Yeah, did you, uh, so were you, how far okay. in advance were you fitted? So pretty, pretty soon. That was actually one of the first events. It's kind of fun. You can invite your family. My kids were little. They came and we got pictures. And they're, they're measuring you for that suit. And you wear, uh, you, you'll wear like a, a suit and a harness that was designed most likely for another astronaut, right? So we all share these things. You don't get to take them home, unfortunately. Right, right. So I think I wore, it was a, a, a an astronaut named Guy Gardner. And he was a, a fairly large guy. And so Guy you are, Am I guy. right, you're the largest astronaut? No, I'm no, not. The one. largest guy was, uh, was Scott Altman. He's the WLA, the world's largest astronaut. <laughs> he was my commander. A little bit taller than me, and and bigger than I was too. He was, he was, you know, a big a big fella. And that's big another guy. that's a, was another eliminator early on. Like early yeah. in the NASA programs didn't want people as tall met, as you guys. Yeah, I, met, <laughs> I met one of the Apollo guys at a, it was at a funeral. Anyway, so he comes up to me and he, he says, uh, "You're kind of tall to be an astronaut, right?" And I'm <laughs> like, "Well, you know, our limit was six foot four, and I was six foot three. And I'm looking at this fella. He's kind of like right around here, right? And I'm like, "You're kind of." Tall too. What was your height limit? And he goes, uh, five. Uh, he said five eleven. I go, how tall are you? He goes, he goes six foot one. I go, how did how did that work? He goes, oh, it wasn't easy. He goes, uh, my commanding officer called me, and you know they were all test pilots. And he goes, you know, I, I don't see how you can do this. Everything, everything we have here says you're six foot one. You have to be five foot eleven. He goes, oh, there must be some mistake, sir. I'll look right into it. He goes to the flight surgeon and gets him to write like five foot thirteen on the on the and with a squiggly three, right? So somehow the paperwork gets through. This is where you didn't have to type stuff on a computer. Right, right, right. Some guys with a pen figuring this out. I don't know if you can get away with this now, kids. So anyway, five foot third, kind of like a squiggly three, and the guy says, okay. And and he went to he said he compressed his spine with jumping jacks, and I don't know if that was healthy, but he but he got in bad posture and he got through. Amazing. So it wasn't just me with the eyeballs, it's other stuff. <laughs> there was, everyone so, has a story. Everyone has a story. So they they do fit you to get a suit that's gonna work. It's not really custom fit, it's more like what what suit do we have in the inventory? And also if there's like two big guys flying in two different uh, uh, flights, you know, which one is gonna be available? And so they, they try to get right. one that, that's available, that, you know, that'll fit you. And then that fit the harness was also, the harness seemed to be like a, a more of a concern, like getting the right harness and getting that fit right, that's the parachute. Yeah. Where, you're going to be jumping out of it. Well, they you know, molded your possibly. hands too for your EVA gloves. Also, the EVA gloves were a little bit different. So we all got hand molds, but again, uh, that depended if there was one in the inventory, like a size in the inventory that yeah. fit. So I had similar size hands to my friend Dan Burbank. Yeah. Uh, and so I wore his gloves. Oh. I wore Burbank gloves. It wasn't necessarily his. It was that serial number was, was right, Burbank. Right. 
So I got to, I wore those on four different spacewalks. So and do you ones. do you have to maintain a certain amount of physicality once you've been fitted for the suit? You can't oh, gain five pounds. Like, uh, <laughs> no, uh, are they like cut down on the spaghetti? They don't have. It's not like you know expandable pants yeah. or anything. <laughs> um, now there would be a problem. What happens is you, as you become a former astronaut, you find out your flight. So I, I ordered my. I had to order a new flight jacket. Right. It's amazing how you get bigger and you're <laughs> when you're not in the astronaut yeah. office any longer. But while you're there, I don't, you know, I think it would be, if you like changed, like if you got much bigger, if you gained yeah. weight or you worked out a lot or you dropped a lot of weight, yeah, you might have to get a new suit because it, it had to fit correctly for yeah. you. Um, but I, it didn't happen that often. You know, typically, um, typically you, you, you were able to, to, to maintain. And the suit was, the, the EVA suit was a little bit different because that was harder to get into. Yeah. So if you gained a lot of weight to get into that thing, that would be a problem. And then everyone would make fun of you. <laughs> so you wouldn't want that to happen. Take cell phone films of you squirming and yeah, getting no, to it. There is a story. We can tell any story we yeah, want here, yeah, right? Absolutely. It doesn't, no one, we don't care. No. Right? So there was uh, an, an astronaut from another country. Uh, anyway, I won't name any names, but he was more of a manager, this guy. And um, he hadn't flown in a long time. And he was going to fly on the space shuttle, this fella. And he was like, really, he looked like a ma he looked more like a manager. You know, he was like, I think he had an early flight and then he was kind of doing desk work for a yeah. while. But he's like, you really want to fly on a space shuttle, apparently. And so, so he, he was in this, this orange suit. And there's only a couple things like you really have to do to, to be qualified to fly on the shuttle. And one of them was, yeah, to show that you can get out of the thing if there's a problem. <laughs> right. And you had to get out of it in different ways. So one scenario was you land on the ground and you can't get out of the hatch and no one can come get you. So you blow the overhead window, and there's a little thing that would deploy on the seat. If you ever make a seat on a shuttle, yeah. so there's a little thing like a step yeah. that you would deploy. So you'd step on the oh. seat, and then step on the thing, and then get through the window. First, first you throw these these uh, these things to to repel, right? Had, oh everybody God. had one. Throw that thing over. You overboard. literally throw your down. Yeah, rope. You to, right. So we had a we had a mock up simulator uh, shuttle to do this. So everyone would throw this thing, and then and you had to get through this thing in your spacesuit. You had to fit through this wi this window that was not very large, but <laughs> you had to get out. And if you couldn't get out, it'd be like, well, what are we going to do? And so, you're wearing the full helmet. Helmet, everything. Yeah, yeah, you have yeah. the same thing. Oh even your shoot, I think, might have still been on at that. Maybe we left the we must have left the harness behind. So it's the helmet, but right, right. but not the uh, was the harness with us. I don't think we had to shoot. I think we left the shoot behind for that. So, but still, you had to get through to your big object as it is. Yeah. Now you get bigger. <laughs> so there was this famous film that we showed at one of our Christmas parties, which we don't do this stuff. They don't do that anymore. Sure. Because it's like mean to people yeah. and stuff. But it was all in good fun. And this dude couldn't get through the couldn't get through the window. So that is now that that probably happened. 25 years ago, and we're still telling that story. Right. So that's enough motivation <laughs> not to bulk up. And there was a, there was a, I think there was a weight limit too. I think it was, I think it might have been like 212 pounds right. or something like that. And, and truth be told, I'm over that weight limit now, but I certainly wasn't back then. So <laughs> there was, you had some motivation to, to yeah, cut down on the pasta back then.